And the big story in Irish football over the last, essentially the last six months or so, has been the potential for an All-Ireland League. And I'm delighted to say we have Pat Fenlon, the general manager of Linfield, with us this morning to talk to us about it. Pat, we could think of nobody better placed who understands the, the dynamics of what's going on here than you to speak to at the moment. Um, the, the news came through that two separate letters have been sent, one from the League of Ireland clubs and one from 10 of the 12 uh, Irish League clubs at least asking UEFA to examine the possibility of this happening, which seems like a bit of a breakthrough in, in some ways, but we don't want to count our chickens yet. This is a long way to go. What's your take on where we are at the moment? Yeah, listen, I think it's, it, there's been a lot of discussions around a lot of work that's gone into it. Um, obviously, I'm working for a club in, in Northern Ireland, and you know, my personal opinion at the moment is that you know it, it would be good you know, to explore this, and I think that's all there is. I think what the clubs have signed up to is to explore the potential, you know, in relation to finances and sporting advantages of how this proposal could be taken forward. And that's all there is. I mean, it's not a sign-up to guarantee that you, you, you want to do do anything. We've got to find out how far we can take it. And is there a, is there a will and a, and a help, you know, uh, from UEFA to try make something like this happen? I think initially there was, when it was discussed, one of the major pitfalls or downfalls, you're going to call it, was that European positions could be lost. I think Hypercube's uh, one of their proposals sort of does away with that, you know, where the league can stay and be played in both separate jurisdictions and then obviously a, a King of the Island competition, which sort of, you know, allays the fears of, of, of the bigger clubs, let's say, in regard to European qualification and the money that goes with that. Now, there's obviously, you know, some fears from the smaller clubs, but again, that's outlined in the letter that, that, all, that all has to be looked at and taken into account. I, that seems to be the... the um the bit that actually allowed the breakthrough to happen where and it, it to be honest it's very promising where a situation is presented feedback is given and a compromise is reached it's exactly how something like this should work absolutely and i've said from the very start of this listen this is a discussion this is you know to the people that are governing the game on both ends of the island here this is about trying to enhance the game and make the game better not anything else you know i think so you know personalities and personal positions have got to be put aside. This is how we develop the game, you know, on the island of Ireland. And, you know, I think that should be explored to the fullest part. And if, if UEFA, who are the governing body, you know, can row in behind that and give us, whether it's financial support, whatever the case may be, that's got to be looked at. I mean, that can only be healthy for the game. Can I ask you what the what the internal debates are like? What, what are the, the conversations <laughs> you're having? Listen, I think, you know, it's no secret to say this will be a major debate at the club that I, that I work for. You know, that, that's, that's, you know, that goes without saying. It will be a very robust debate, I would think, at boardroom level and probably a very robust debate if we have to take it to our members, which we would have to do if, if, if it was to go forward. So, but again, it's about discussion. It's about moving on. It's about what's best for Linfield. You know, there will be fears with Northern Irish clubs, I would think, in relation to being maybe not as strong as some of the Southern clubs. But my own personal opinion on that is the club, Linfield, is as big as any of the clubs down south and potentially bigger. You know, So it's how we recognise that potential and fulfil that potential. And this is probably a way to help us to do that. So I'm sure it will be a robust debate, but I think it'll be honest and frank debate. And hopefully, hopefully we get to the position where we can have that debate and try to take the game forward. Because I think it's important that the, the, the biggest clubs in the Irish League, um, you, yourselves amongst them, are actually certainly willing to listen to what's going on and, uh, and come in with that sense that maybe, maybe there is a, a different way of doing things that would actually benefit grassroots football, which in turn will increase the number of fans coming through the turnstiles, and then you get bigger games and potentially more sponsorship and TV deal. That's, that's the, the dream scenario here. It is, yeah, and it has to be. That has to be the full debate. It's not just about the, the, the Irish League clubs or the League of Ireland clubs. It's about football in general and how this could could help all uh, strands of football in both countries. You know, so that that's a, that's a massive you know discussion that has to be had. But at the moment, you know, both leagues are suffering. You know, we don't have any real revenue. You know, we're relying on gate receipts, which is probably the only league in Europe that I think would do that. You know, so there has to be discussion. We're not getting that at the moment, so we've nothing to lose. You know, there has to be a realization. From both associations now to say it's not working, the clubs are not happy with it. You know we have to look at a different option. You know, and I think that's what both associations have to take on board. Again, like I said, self-preservation is not not up here. It's about how we how we develop the game. You know, and any aspects of that and anything anything that's brought forward, I think should be discussed. And when we get to a point to make a decision, that will be the club's decisions. 
Pardon my ignorance here, I don't know what the uh, official formal relationship between the clubs and the IFA is in Northern Ireland. Hmm. Do they license the league? Is it exactly the same as it is in, in the no, South? Well, we have a different government. We, we have Niffle who, who, who run the game in Northern Ireland. Um, you know, and obviously the IFA oversee football in, in, in Northern Ireland. Um, you know, so it's a little bit different to, 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 to the Southern League where the FAI have full jurisdiction over it. So it is a, a, lift, a, a different setup, but we, we have the same problems. You know, we have the same problems. We have a situation at the moment where we don't know in relation to football uh, in the north of Ireland whether that's when it's going to come back. You know, we have a situation obviously with COVID-19 where a lot of the clubs are struggling. We're going to have major issues around facilities and dressing rooms, you know, and yet our association in the north of Ireland have taken in something like I think between four and five million from FIFA and UEFA, and not one penny of that will be given towards, you know, helping the clubs get through the crisis. So, like all them things have to, you know, be put aside, and we have to we have to look at it and see how do you benefit the game. And at the end of the discussion, the discussion is that listen, it's not going to make it better. There's not enough finances. In it. That's fine, but at least have that discussion and, and bring it to its conclusion, and then make a decision. Can I just ask? Because the, the ten clubs signed this letter, is that is yes. that correct? And, and when did that letter has that letter been sent to UEFA? As far as you well, know, we, or what's that we, process? The, the letter went to the OFA, and that's the process we got to go through. So we've requested that the OFA send it on to UEFA. Okay. And do you have any idea? I, I assume they'll just do that. That that that'll be a, a rubber stamp from them that they they can't kind of say no, we we disagree with this, so we're not sending it, can they? They can do, I suppose, it's like anything, they can send it on or they don't have to send it on, but we, we would hope that, you know, the 10, 10 clubs out of 12 have sent that letter and I think that's strong enough to say, listen, we want to explore the, the possibilities and um, we'll be very disappointed if that didn't happen. Okay. In terms of the future pitfalls, like, who needs to be convinced the most? Say you wave come back and say, okay, we like what you've done there, we understand that the two leagues will still be independent for mm -hmm. long enough and the points will yeah. still count to the end of the year and essentially, it's a cross-border competition at the end for a title, which is, you know, which is, is exciting and novel. And you would hope that there's all sorts of reasons that they could um, see it working. At that point, if, if, if they get that far, what's the next potential pitfall? I think, that the, I think the big thing for this to convince, to convince clubs to take this forward is always financial. You know, at the moment, both, both, both uh, leagues... We struggle financially. We don't have proper TV deals. We don't have proper sponsorship deals that you know allow the clubs to, to to have real genuine income like a lot of clubs around Europe. So, I think from the very start of this, this has always been a case that finance is going to be the big, big question at the end of this. And that that again is 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 a question for the people that are that are looking to to develop this scenario. You know, what are the finances behind it? You know, are you UEFA in a position to maybe financially get behind it? So, I think I think. The big pitfall, if you're asking me, is probably what is the financial deal? What's it going to be when, when all this discussion is at the end? And if, if that's something that is substantial, well, then I think you can take it forward. If it's not, then I, I, I don't think it, 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 will, it will wash with the clubs, to be honest. And Pat, is your sense that within the ranks of the IFA or with teams and clubs in Northern Ireland, is there a sense that what's happened recently in the FAI is a, is a further stumbling block, that if you are talking about the positives needing to be based on finances, well, the FAI haven't exactly been in rude financial health over the last little while. No, absolutely, and I think, you know, it's, it's, it's well known in, in, in the north of Ireland as well, the financial difficulties that the FAI have got themselves into over the last few years. You hope, we're, hope, we're all hoping that's changing, and we know there's a lot of debate and discussion going on at the moment, so you're hoping we come out on the right side of that, the, the association is governed properly and run properly. Um, you know, it, it, it's 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 like I said, it's we there is opposition to it. I mean, the OFA have come out on a couple of occasions now and said that you know it can't happen. They don't want it to happen. And um, but f but for me, you know, that's not acceptable. And because y if you're governing the game, you've got to look at how you develop the game. You know, and whatever potential is there to develop the game, you've you've got to you've got to take that as far as you can. Like I said, discussions. You know, no one gets hurt in a discussion. You bring it forward to the conclusion, and then you make a decision. But like I said, this will be all around. The reason this is happening is because the clubs are struggling financially. Now, like I said before, we just there, we, we've had no, you know, had no help in relation to, to since the game has stopped with, with in, in regard to COVID-19. You know, it's all financial, and that's the one thing that will bring this to the proper conclusion for us is, is there going to be a deal to be done that will help the clubs prosper? And that's all the clubs. That's not just, you know, the bigger clubs as such. That's all the clubs through, through all the leagues within, within uh, both jurisdictions.
Okay. Is there? Is, sorry, just uh, sorry, George. Just one more, uh, Pat. Is there any sense of uh, worry or maybe even paranoia uh, in the, within the IFA or within the clubs again uh, that this is just a stepping stone? That there will be more discussions about bringing North and South together with kind of uh, a more concrete league or potentially a team way down the line? Or, or what's your sense on that? Yeah, I, I think that that's that's that would be a genuine concern. I think that's something that has been discussed at the start of this, and we've all heard that in the early discussions. You know, if it's one league, does it have to be one Ireland? Does it have to be one national team? Does it have to be one association? But I think the game is moving. I think you'll see, you know, across Europe, this may happen in in in, in some different jurisdictions, not just in on the island of Ireland. I think if you look at a lot of the, the smaller leagues and the likes of Belgium and Holland and. You know, the bigger leagues are, are going forward or European football is developing and it'll become elite for me in relation to the Europa League and the Champions League. It's how we find a niche then for the smaller clubs to be able to financially survive. You know, so I think there'll be much more open discussion around this going forward. Yeah, Belgium and Holland joining together would be great because no one's going to start saying suddenly, well, you can't have a Belgian national team, you can't have a, a Netherlands national team. Obviously, it's a slightly more complicated uh, situation on our, on our island, but not that much more complicated. You know, it's pretty easy to work that out. Pat, it sounds like you're <laughs> relatively... I don't want to say hopeful, but um, <laughs> at, at least there's like a, a potential. This is you no, know. listen. My 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 hope is on the basis that I want the game to develop. I I don't want to see a situation what we have at the moment. Facilities are really. I've been you know banging this drum for a long long time, and sometimes you get fed up listening to yourself. But I just see. I just think that if you're if you're running the game in in a jurisdiction, you have to take it to the final conclusion to see how we can develop that and make it better. And that's all we're asking here is let's talk. Let's see how far we get. Let's see is the resources there. And don't forget, if there's more resources there for the top end of the game, that obviously then releases more resources for the for the, for the the other end of the game through the association. So it should be discussed as far as it can be. Yeah, 100%. Look, I, I hope you don't get tired of the sound of your own voice because <laughs> you're, you're going to end up being one of these people who everybody turns to and says, well, what do you think? Because you understand it better than most people. Um, so I, I'd say keep, keep talking because it's great to hear. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that.